Hey, I'm Stefan with Claire Online Video and welcome to this tutorial on adding an infrared look to your video using After Effects Creative Cloud 2015. The infrared look is commonly used in horror films, science and military shows, thermal imaging, and even medical videos. The final effect can produce a dreamlike visual that you may want to use for a specific project. While the best way to accomplish this look is with the use of built-in effects and filters on special IR cameras, Many of you probably don't own one of these. So I wanna show you how After Effects can accomplish this look with a simple workflow. Starting with having After Effects open, you'll want to import a video clip that you'd like to use for this infrared effect. I suggest using a visual that shows the sky, trees, or grass, as these items really stand out when adding this effect. With your video loaded, let's create a new composition by dragging the video clip from the project panel to the create a new composition icon. This creates a composition for us based on the dimensions of our video. Next, we'll navigate over to the Effects and Presets panel. Here, we can search for the infrared built-in effect. When you see the Colorize Infrared Effect option, you can drag this over to your video or to your video layer in the Timeline panel. So you now have the infrared look applied to your footage. By all means, you can stop here if you're happy with the default look. I'm going to fine-tune this by opening the Effects Control panel. Here you can see that when we added the effect, after Effects created this look with the use of three separate adjustments. All of these can be modified to achieve a desired look. Starting from the top, I'll go ahead and adjust a few things in the solid composite area. We'll leave the source opacity at 100, but I will change the overall color by selecting the color square. This will open up some color options. I'd like to create more of a nighttime look, so I'll choose a red that's not as bright as the default. Once you have a color selected, you can press OK. Next, I'll scale back the effect opacity by adjusting the value to 75%. The next area you can play around with is the blending mode. By default, it's set to exclusion, but you have the choice to choose from a range of blending modes. Again, I'm going for a darker look, so I'll choose one of the darker blend modes, and in this case, I'll go with the difference. But feel free to choose a blend mode that works for you. As I scan through my footage on the timeline, you can see what this is starting to look like after these adjustments. Back in the effects control panel, we can move on with adjusting our levels. We'll keep the channel at RGB so we can get an overall level view. The histogram option here works like any other histogram, where you can increase or decrease shadows and highlights and tonality. I'll make the red stand out a little more by adjusting my fader in this top section. This is also starting to bring out some more of my greens in the shot. Moving down, you can adjust these options manually by entering values for your blacks, whites, and gamma although I prefer to use the histogram. Finally, you have the option to adjust some of the hues and saturation of the effect. Traditionally, the infrared look is in the reddish color tone, so I'll stick with that, but you can choose another color by adjusting the hues and saturation here. The overall effect is obviously a very stylized look, but you do see this come up in a lot of places. I encourage you give it a try when you need something like this in your next creative project. Thank you for watching, and be sure to check out my other tutorials on Streaming Media Producer.